everybody. I am back. This video is pretty much going to be about certain credentials that can make your life a lot lucrative and a lot easier as a truck driver. I've actually made a video talking about investing in your CDO. I was just talking about how you know you can invest in it by getting all your endorsements. All your endorsements include tankers, it includes um, triple doubles, it includes hazmat, and for the people that just want to have it all, extra to get your passenger endorsement. If you go for passenger endorsement, you have to take the written test as well as find somebody like YMCA. You got to actually get a job somewhere to where you can do a test drive in an actual bus. You can't just take a written test, pass, and that's it. You actually have to take a driving test to get your passenger endorsement. That's what I found out. Endorsements as far as investing in your CDO, um, things like a passport. You have passports that is good for people that just want to take it an extra step in their career. Maybe you want to do Lowe's going to Canada. Even though Lowe's going to Canada can be a headache, if y'all seen my I Got Detained in Canada video, you know the stresses you have to go through just to cross into Canada and cross back. But things like that, you need a passport. So if you just want to be able to do whatever you feel you want to do, if you just want to go to Canada as a truck driver just because, because like get passports for your kids and yourself, just something for like a vacation. This is a passport is always good to have anyway. Because you know, a passport is another form of ID. Because to get a passport, you have to go beyond measures to prove your identity. You got to get birth certificates, uh, social security cards. Uh, your eye, a lot of information to get a passport and you don't just get a passport right away. A passport takes almost a month and they have to keep your birth certificate and mail it back to you to do a full, full background check for a passport. Trucker, you should have because when you're doing loads, at some point in your career, you're going to have to pass through a port of some sort. Like you got containers, you got driving, you got flatbeds, you know, you got wide loads. But the wild loads, the drive in, the reefers, all that don't require a Twit card. But if you want to, well, if you some drive vans you have to pass through ports. So some drive van comes off of ports, meaning it comes shipped over here, and some of these loads come from other countries on a boat, and the boat delivers it in containers, or it might be in a drive van, meaning like you know the trailer y'all see me run a lot, to where you have to go and pick that load up. But a lot of times when you go to these port yards, you cannot be allowed on a yard without a Twit card. And if you are allowed on a yard without a Twit card, you have to be escorted and you have to pay a certain amount of money. So, so far I've seen things like $5. Like sometimes you can probably pay up to, it really depends. The most I've seen was like $25 for entry. With the Twit card, you don't have to pay nothing for entry and you don't have to be escorted. I'm gonna read what it is but um i actually had got my twit card when i was at prom and there's a process of getting your twit card you have to sit down and you have to do your fingerprints you have to fill out an application you know give all your history of all your background they have to do a full background check even your twit card takes a while just like the passport to come to you and there's numbers that i really want you guys to take down because let's just say you move like i move I had to call the Twit card and get them to update my address, and then I had got a divorce. Now I have my actual maiden name, so I changed my maiden name. By the way, I offer legal shield for anybody that's interested. I have to leave my information at the bottom. This, this is what a Twit card looks like, and this is my updated version. So, um, like, I don't know if they change the colors when you get them, like by the year, but. I finally got my updated Twit card that got my maiden name on there. The port yards, whatever, you know, you can show them this. And all your credentials, all your credentials is on that chip. You know how you got like a little debit or credit card, how they put all it. They trying to go from everything that's traditional to chips anyway. You know, pretty soon they trying to, and they already doing it, but they want to put chips in people's hands and people's foreheads. Y'all know what that is, the mark of the beast, but we not going to go into that. But all the information about your background check, who you are, if they wanted to, a lot of times they just want you to flash it, they see your Twit card, okay, you good. But that chip serves for a purpose that if they had something that they really had to scan you for, they can scan that chip and pull all your information off. But some of these port yards are highly secure to where you have to go for the, for the officers or the guards 
to where they have to search your truck before they let you on the yard, whether you have a twig card or not. If they find any type of suspicion, guess what? They will, just like the Canadian search my car, and I almost got detained in Canada video, for whatever reason, just for a random check, they can say, um, ma'am, sir, you got an animal in your truck? A lot of times, courts don't even allow animals to come in, so if you got an animal, you can't go pick that load up. But some places, at a random, or just because they sus suspicious or whatever, they'll tell you, get off the truck, and they will ramsack and really just search, like, tear your truck up to search it. They have searched everything, and if you got a weapon on your truck, I feel sorry for you, but yeah, this, this stuff, as far as security, they don't play, and when I signed up with Prime, I, I didn't get this, so when I did my update for my main name, this came ID for the Twig card, but come to find out, it's like some type of pin, so this comes with the Twig card. So I don't know. I'm going to read it to see. It says, congratulations on your TWIC. The eight-digit personal identification pin for your TWIC is provided on your card as shown on the right. The fingers to use with your TWIC are also indicated on the card care. And the reason why they got the fingers, because like I said, when you go first apply, you have to do your fingerprints. So they register your fingerprints with this pin. The fingers to use with your Twitter card are also indicated on the card. Please note, as per U.S. Coast Guard Meridian Time Regulations, prior to granting you entry, facilities may conduct a visual inspection of your Twitter card. Prior that you provide your PIN or use your fingerprints in order to verify your identity. So sometimes they might say, hey, let me see your Twitter card, ma'am or sir. So you show your Twitter card, but that might not be enough. So then they might need to see this card. Uh, and to run that pin or you know run your fingerprints get your pin and lose your care card you will need to visit UES enrollment center nearest you to have your pin reset your twig has been mailed to you in a separate envelope if you do not receive your twig within five business days of receiving your pin please call the UES call center at 1-855-347-8357 Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to report a lost card. UES Call Center will be able to assist in tracking your TWIC or, play, or placing an order for a replacement TWIC. If, if you have any questions about your TWIC or require any support, please call the UES Call Center of the number listed above for additional information on TWIC program. Please visit our website at www.tsa.gov forward slash TWIC. Thank you, Transportation Security Administrator. So yes, guys. So what USC, y'all probably like, damn, what you what UES stand for? Let me see if it's on here. I'm not even going to act like I know everything because I don't. That's why I'm reading. It's for Universal Enroll Services. So that's what it looks like it is saying here. Yep, universal enroll. I bought a Twig card, so a lot of times people, when they say, oh, you, you should have this, this is lucrative, you know, get this, get that, but know why you're getting it. Educate yourself to know why you're getting it. Don't just get it because I say, oh, get your Twig card because this does this and that. You want to have all the fine details of why you should have it, what is it for, what's the history of it. You can even take it upon yourself to do your own research after you finish watching this video. I'm going to read it to you anyway. So that's the one that I have. So the Transportation Worker Identification Credentials or TWIC program is a Transportation Security Administration and Guard initiative in the United States. So some drivers probably pick up loads from the Coast Guard site or probably military um, people or even just people that have military contracts because there's a lot of owner ops that have a contract, you know, you get contracts through, through SAMS, but that's something totally different to talk about too, but the TWIC program provides a tamper resistant biometric credential to maritime workers requiring unexported access to secure areas of port facilities, outer, outer continental shelf facilities, and vessels regulated under the Maritime Transportation Security Act of 2002 or the MTSA and all U.S. Coast Guard credential. As of May 2014, there were 2,999,058 people enrolled in the program. 
Those seeking unexported access to secure areas aboard affected vessels and all Coast Guard credential merchant mariners must obtain a TWIC. The new map implemented on April 15, 2019 to obtain a TWIC. An individual must provide biographic and biometric information such as fingerprints, like I said, sit for digital photograph, and successfully pass a security threat assessment conducted by the TSA. So when they do a background check, guys, they check in everything. So I'm not saying, you know, some things don't show up to where you don't have to tell everything but stuff that you know gonna show up tell it because if it does show up you will get denied for your twit card and it probably be a good while before you can you probably will never probably won't be able to apply for one or if you can apply for one it'd be a very long time so don't get caught lying on your application the issue card pictured right contains a computer chip known as a integrated circuit chip ICC which stores the holders information and biometric data the chip can be read by inserting it into a reader or holding it near a contactless reader. There are also a magnetic strip similar to a credit card and a linear barcode on the back as alternative reading methods. Credit card, you know how credit cards have the uh, magnetic strip on the back of them? You know, you don't have to necessarily swipe or insert that chip for it to be read. If any, not, not even just, you know, the people that should be reading your information, but if somebody gets one of them certain scanners, they can just walk by your wallet, full of all your information, scan your stuff, and pick up all your information. That's how people's identities get stolen. And I can help with that. I sell legal shield. Once again, I have to put my information. Or y'all can just call me if anybody's interested in signing up for legal protection for you and your family. You know, you can even email me, but I'm going to start leaving my contact information for anybody that's interested and you know legal services and you can also sign up to join my team and sell the legal services to anybody that you know can use and make money off of it but other than that though like I said I have a wallet for that reason to where the wallet is supposed to protect um, people just walking up being able to read I forget the name for it but they have so many wallets that can protect your magnet strips from like identity theft people stealing your stuff but since that that twig card has that, that chip in it, they don't necessarily have to have an insert or swipe machine. They can have something that can scan it and before you know it, they got all your information just that quick and then they can have you enter into the port or facility. This stuff is important to have, you know, it just makes you valuable. It's like you're just, you're not limited to just staying in the States or you're not limited just going to regular shippers or receivers. You can go anywhere. So, you know, by me building on all my credentials, I'm pretty valuable because you know, I don't have a criminal record. You know, I don't have no tickets or anything. Worst case scenario that I got on my record right now is, is the stupid jackknife, but the jackknife wasn't even my fault. So you have to really do your best to keep your CDL clean. Take care of your CDL. If you take care of your CDL, baby, your CDL gonna take, that's like taking care of your body. You take care of your body, your body's going to take care of you to where when you get older, you're not all breaking down, unhealthy, about to die prematurely because you just neglected your body. So health is well. Work out. Eat right. Think right. Get toxic people out of your life. CDL, you know, don't speed. Don't drink and drive. Don't get tickets. You know, build up your, your CDL with them endorsements and passports and twigs like be valuable be valuable health wise be valuable conventional wise all that stuff plays a role in you being successful with your full um, trucking career and, and starting to make money if you do what you're supposed to do with just being positive and pursuing and building the money gonna follow trust so all right guys time is the essence let's make better time of it you know let's build up on our credentials so we can have everything we need in life so all right y'all i love y'all i never judge y'all so mm, mm, mm. deuces <laughs> deuces my lovely people